we continue our fishing adventure off the coast of Grand Isle, Louisiana. I would say this has got to be one of the best fishing spots in the world, huh? Absolutely. Cajun Aces star chef Cody Carroll heats up our taste buds. Extra hot. The bad thing is you can't cool it off with that. <laughs> no, this is not cooling me off. With the local catch and amazing flavor. Really, really good. It's my first encounter with the Louisiana commercial shrimping boats, and I'm absolutely awestruck with the complexity of the process. It only gets wilder as we climb aboard. You can't believe the amount of on the boat. Getting all the uh, bycatch. And with the bycatch, we hope to raise a plethora of fish that includes the yellowfin tuna. I'm so excited! This will prove to be a very challenging exploit. I don't think we're going to be able to uh catch this school. As a team, this crew will find a way to get the job done. We got it, this time! Come on! <laughs> oh yeah! We got a yellow baby! Uncharted Waters with Peter Miller is presented by Salt Life. Shrimping in Louisiana has a long and rich history. Fishermen have taken advantage of Louisiana's marshes and estuaries since the 1770s by early travelers. With the expansion of new technology and massive nets, Louisiana quickly became a large exporter of shrimp. Now, shrimp boats are seen in abundance. The typical shrimp boat stays out for weeks on end in hopes of yielding a high catch rate in order to cover their expenses and make some profit. Hasta la vista, baby! See you tomorrow! Look at that, huh? That's a shrimp. You can't believe the amount of shit that's on this boat. So I sit on a block, is that what I do? First time on a shrimp boat like this, and we're getting all the uh, bycatch, using it for uh, chum to catch the tuna. So they keep the shrimp, we keep the stuff they don't need, because all they do is sell shrimp. That's a goggle eye. What's your name, by the way? Uh, my name's Alan Montelongo. Alan, nice to meet you, Peter. How long have you been doing this? I've been doing this 20 years. 20 years, huh? 20 years. Man, where are you originally from? Uh, it's Bronzeville, Texas. Okay. How many pounds do you think this is right here? Uh, I will pull 200 pounds out of it. 200 pounds in four hours? Four hours. We hit it, man. Jackpot, baby. We got you a 12 pack. All right, so these guys are out here for about a month at a time. They bring enough beer to just hang out and drink a few every now and then and they end up running out they don't have enough storage for it all so we basically just trading this is like gold and their bycatch is like gold for us so if you had to go buy all this at a store and you'd be spending over a thousand dollars on just bait so if we get a little bit of their gold we give them a little bit of our gold and everybody's happy everybody wins holy my bad i did not plan on that can you imagine taking <laughs> one to the grill and just going down the floor <laughs> Our bycatch bags are filled with a wide array of fish. All right, so what we got here? We got our little croakers. This is a this is an interesting deep water fish. I don't even know the name of. Big eyes, you know it's in the deep water. Little uh, little goggle eyes. Here's a mantis shrimp. Something you don't see every day. Look at this. This is a fish stuck in a jellyfish. I mean, when do you see that? A lot of ribbon fish. Their teeth are like. Super nasty, look at that. This is just a, a small portion of the bag. Right behind us, you'll see we have a shark. You can throw a ribbon, this ribbon fish right now, and this shark will come up and eat it. Watch this. He's gonna come up right between the engines and gobble it down. There he goes. Right, watch this. Boom. Perfect. On cue. So, problem is, when you get all this bait and you have all this activity, the sharks are here in like massive numbers, like more than I've ever seen. These guys, they're kicking a bunch of uh, 
debris off the side of the boat and these sharks are going absolutely wild so as they drift back the sharks school up and you can see them on the surface and they're about to go wild behind the boat oh my god becky you do not want to be in that water right now sharks are basically riding on top of each other trying to get after these baits that are being thrown over and they're all good sized sharks you know there's a couple small ones mixed in but for the most part they're like 100 plus 150 a couple of 200 pounders Uncharted Waters with Peter Miller is presented by Salt Life. Live salty. Citizen. Better starts now. Invincible. When you're serious. Mercury. Go boldly. We're behind a shrimp boat out here, about 50 miles from shore, cutting up chunks, letting it drift out. We're creating our own, like, chum line. We're waiting for a blackfin to show up, and then yellowfin to show up. He's chumming, he's got a little feeding frenzy around a boat. Sharks and bonitas and everything you put in the water is getting hammered. I'm trying to feel it with my thumb when it's going in there. He goes, got picked up there. Something made it there. We hooked this fish on the live bait behind the shrimp boat, and then we drifted back behind him, and this is the shrimp trawl as it went by. Here's our fish that Peter's got on the line. We're just hoping he's the right species and not a shark. I don't know. Feels like a shark. I hate to be a buzzkill. Sometimes you never know. That hurts the spleen. We fought big tuna before that we swore were a shark and wanted to cut them off and never did and ended up being like 175 pound yellowfin. Yeah, you don't know, man. Let's just get him in. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I like that. Yeah, we should be close. He's rising up, gather around, scoping up. Shark. Good job. And that's your morning workout with Pete Miller. Thanks for watching. <laughs>
we got a very small fish on. Look, there he is. He just jumped out. He's, He's getting eaten. Gone. Someone's got him in his mouth. Ready to harpoon. He's shiny. There he comes. Barracuda. That's oh, a yeah. nice size barracuda. Woo! Look at those teeth. Let me hold that thing. Look at that cootie. Nice one. That's a fatty, huh? That's good deep drop bait. Yeah, you want to keep them? Oh, yeah. Fishing chaos. Fish smarter, not harder. Livingston, the difference is clear. Celdration, good for you, good for our planet. Celdration is hydration defined. Yeti, built for the wild. Since the early 1800s, Louisiana had already developed a culinary reputation as a place for exotic and unique cuisine. People from the area pride themselves in being highly skilled chefs. One very well-known chef from the area, Cody Carroll, has a restaurant called Hot Tails in nearby New Roads. He also has a cooking show called Cajun Aces. I'm thrilled that Cody took the time to make a Food Network-worthy spread for me to try some local favorites. All right, Cody, what do we got going on here today? We're doing shrimp and grits, and I'm waiting on Bloody Marys. All right, right here, we got Bloody Marys going on a little South Louisiana tradition. Oh, we're dipping that in the seasoning. Oh, yeah. Some specialty ingredients, too. So this is a snack stick. We had it made from deer off our property in Bordelonville, Louisiana. Take you a little taste. Oh, here we go. See what you think. That's perfect. I got a surprise for you. Remember that shrimp you picked on the shrimp boat? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's that's the actual that's shrimp we picked. The topper. Oh man, I think I got to weave that around in here and get some flavor saver going. Oh yeah, good yeah. stir stick. Here we go. Wow. Man, I'm not just saying this. This is delicious. Nice. I can't find my sausage yet. I'll find it. <laughs> you got to drink up. I got to drink, drink down up. a little bit to get it. Here I go. Go, go, go. You guys gonna have one too? Let's do it. So how long you been a professional chef? Like most people in Louisiana are mm -hmm. professional chefs. Really? Everybody can cook. You guys have like cook-offs? Yeah. And usually with like a main and a side. Like, oh, the beans were better than jambalaya. And everything spicy. It's always competition. It's always oh. spicy. I cook spicy. Extra hot. That's how uh, we grew that in our garden. I'm scared of that. The bad thing is you can't cool it off with that. <laughs> no, this is not cooling me off. <laughs> Cody's first dish is fresh yellowfin sashimi, designed to easily be made out on the boat. Yeah, so super simple. He sliced the tuna for me, cabbage, a little bit of the tiger sauce. It's like a sweet and spicy Louisiana sauce. A little bit of shaved radish, jalapeno, cilantro. We're gonna finish with soy sauce on top. So it's like something we can really just eat fast. You've introduced me to something I never even dreamt of. I've only done it with soy sauce and, and wasabi. That is really, really good. So it's kind of like a fish taco with no taco. Yeah, and the open face. That's the way to do it. Next up is the star in Southern traditional cooking, shrimp and grits. It can be served as breakfast, lunch, or dinner. You want to season? If you think you have enough, put a little more. Okay, I think I might be there, right? So we did Worcestershire sauce, chopped garlic, Cajun seasoning, lemons, and shrimp. That's it. So you can see how the bottom's cooked. Yep. We're going to flip them all over. Okay. The key to the next step is you're gonna add butter, right? But you gotta you you have to use real butter. We did an herb butter and a regular butter. So the key here is you're making a sauce, right? So you're gonna stir it on super low. Okay. It's gonna make a pretty sauce. It's rich, but it's still just pungent and delicious. Man, that looks delicious. Go get it. Yeah. Well, it's official. I like grits. <laughs> <laughs> you just had to come to Louisiana. With some garlic bread being placed on the grill, this meal seems far from over. Black and tuna. Tell me about this. It's gonna be an andouille and shrimp linguine. This is the andouille, so this is a Cajun sausage. Super lean, super smoked. Andouille going in the pan. A little bit of mushrooms in here. Oh boy, the hot pack. We got a hot pocket going in, guys. You got your garlic. Not shy with the garlic. That smells good. Oh yeah. To sear the tuna, Cody starts by dipping it in melted butter and coating both sides with Cajun seasoning. This cooks for only a few seconds per side on a hot pan. Look at that, that's a beaut. This is a dish that people crave. While I continue to pan sear the tuna, Cody adds more ingredients to the unduly sausage. Clam juice. Oh, a little heavy cream, huh? A little bit. A little bit of uh, Creole mustard. You guys are so saucy. It's French. Yeah. So like Cajun cooking came from French, right? Yeah. 
and Italians. So about to, <laughs> we're about to put some pasta in. Not this. for the lactose intolerant. Just you could power a jet plane if you were lactose intolerant eating that meal. <laughs> Y'all know what you're doing? You're a professional Cajun chef now. Oh right? yeah. <laughs> you gotta use lots of stuff. Oh, I remember that shrimp. Those shrimpers were like some of the nicest guys we ever met. The dish comes together with linguine, chopped green onions, and after a quick mix, it's plated with a tuna steak on top and a side of garlic bread. Woo! Finish that off. <laughs> Finish that off. <laughs> All right. Magic. <laughs> I love it. Pretty good. Huh? Mm -hmm. It smells good, I know that. That tastes so good. If I lived here, man, I might gain another 100 pounds. Whew, it's a struggle. Mm. The struggle is real mm -hmm. down here, I promise you. This is such a feast, man. I might need a nap after this. Yeah. <laughs> Salt Life sunglasses. See clearly. Cobalt. Construction and development. Invincible. When you're serious. Mercury. Go boldly. We find ourselves off the coast of Louisiana in the Gulf of Mexico. The yellowfin tuna continues to elude us, but we believe that it's just a matter of time before we'll hook up. Veteran fishermen always have one more method to catch their target species. This bonita chunk, we cut a slit in here, and we stick this hook straight in here, just like that, and hide it where the fish can't see it. And we just basically are plopping it down in the water and not putting any tension on it to where it doesn't pull the hook out. Plop it in there, and Pete's gonna pull from the tip and just let it free fall. The tuna need to see the bait going with the current, going with the other chunks that are going naturally. If it looks unnatural, they won't eat it. And then you wait for that little dink in your hand. We got it, Come on! Woohoo! <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> this fish is pretty heavy. I think it's a yellow fin. He's definitely 30 plus. I see color, I got color. We got a yellow baby! Holy balls! He's a pretty one! Yeah! Woohoo! Yeah. yeah! Hey, we did it! Once again! Yeah! Nice one, huh? Oh yeah! Woo! That is oh, a heavy yellow pin. Come on, Kyle, get in here! Alright! Let's try to get another come out here and you do like 50 steps before you can actually get to catch the tuna. I mean, of course you can come out and get lucky and, you know, get on one and get in school, whatever, see them, you know, bust on the surface and throw something at them, maybe get one. But to do the work like these guys did to hook up with the shrimp boats, to negotiate getting the bags of discard, to getting on the shrimp boats to help them sort so we could get more because now we're being helpful. And then catching bonitas, which we're using for bait, which is catching the tuna. And uh, we got them, and I think we're going to be eating them tonight. <laughs> what is it? It's a baby tuna, a baby blackfin. Hey, he's going down. That's such good bait. That is like bloop for a nice big tuna. Them fish are marking three, four hundred foot. That blackfin will swim down there to them, and they'll eat them. Hold it right there. Let them have it. Big fish eating a blackfin. Oh, yeah. Feels like a tuna. Look at you guys. What a crack crew. You good? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, just keep on easing ahead now. All he do is making circles. Every time you see that go down, it's, that's him pumping. We got a nice one. We got him, yeah! It's a nice tuna. Ooh, yeah, he's a nice one. Man competition. Yeah. Woo. Nice job. Woo. That's good, buddy. He ate a big bait, didn't he? Overall, Louisiana has been absolutely phenomenal. 
super welcoming, great team here. We got some of the best fishermen in the world. We're on a 40 Invincible with quad 400. And our chase boat is a 35 Invincible Cat, which is pulling up right now next to us. And uh, apparently we pass drinks to each other. This is, this is, this is close combat and I like it. How much you got this guy? We only fish 17 hours a day, guys. For additional content and social media, please visit us at unchartedwaterstv.com.